These are the best highlights from today's 2024 LEC Summer Playoffs matchup. Both junglers trying to tend up towards this way. Connor doing a great job to get those early trades in his favor, but certainly going to expect a lot of a jungle attention to try and get this on either side because that poke can be very. Oh, hang on. Oh, the flash start. What? Upset, no cleanse. Remember, cleanse away from the exhaust and upset. One more auto from Rahal. He flashes for it. They get it. Beautiful stuff from Rahal and Luan. Upset. Not able. Because of that SK, were able to punish. Did have to use all their sums to do so, including that ignite earlier for the cleanse. This one's going to trade him onto closer. Doesn't quite get the second half of the Winter's Wrath, but we'll get the permafrost. Kana starting to collapse here, goes through the acceleration gate. Isma dashes back towards Irrelevant. Is Niski's the first to move from mid, but Vladdy's on his way as well. Kana trading with Irrelevant, who has to flash away, and Kana takes the kill. Isma could look for him, no flash now on that. Jason Niski flashes forward for it. The gasoline gun, Ratatat tatting into the back of Kana in the end. Even though the Phosphorus Bomb misses, Kana will fall to Niski. So nicely done. They end up getting at least a kill on towards Irrelevant now. They come back up. Yeah, and Luan's spot on as well, so Kana could just play safe. Hug his tower. Doesn't really have to be a threat under anything. Wave not really pushed in too quickly either, although Irrelevant can rectify that situation. Only the second time. out in any sort of trade, because she'll just heal it back up. So upset, yeah. sent packing. And that's where SK just using that throw the MF mid, right to lean into sides here, set up the dragon, and are very likely going to do a similar story here to try and look for the Rift Herald. But now Kana trying to use those four groups. Oh, slice of magic coming out from Irrelevant. More to clear oh. the wave than anything I thought. Kana, I think, realizing there was a TP behind him, decided to go all out. Irrelevant taking the kill in the one she v one. in this time around and not having that magic resist. Definitely came back to bite him a little bit. Couldn't get the knock away from the ultimate because he was CC'd for so long as well. And ends up falling down. Nice job from SK to get that kill, but KC have to respond on the opposite side because they saw the TP from Niski top end. Yeah, and good cross map from KC. They get first tower, 600 gold. They steal away a red buff. Yes, you lose a kill and a herald for it, but SK will take a tower of their own. First tower does still give you more gold and. Although there is still a gold lead for SK. Yep, it's the top side to try and get Scuttle Crab and set up a little bit of vision for Relevant means that KC get to move into bot side and clear out all the vision that Luan just put through. So <coughs> Carmen Corp actually in a decent position to try and go for this. TP behind. Kana's up towards the top side. Magnus Storm. Closer getting pulled back. Trying to get away, but the Nature's Grasp will only save him for a second. Twisted advance forward, still he falls. Irrelevant goes in with the slicing Maelstrom, upset with the cleanse immediately. Irrelevant able to survive. Closer in the end, takes him with the Leandries, but Targamus pays for it with his life. SK find two, Vladdy and upset. Still healthy enough to challenge. But look at the H, exactly, the HP bars on KC side are... Uh, back out onto the map first, are able to get the Dragon. Ultimately, uh, a good play for KC, right? You end up trading two for one, one for one. Um, and, yeah, and you end up securing the, the why dragon. you end up in these neutral mid-game states because on the one hand, sure, we have these tools, but the tools on the other side can often mitigate and, and limit your options. I think it's also just the information game that favors KC so much. I mean, look at the wards that are littered all over the map for Carmine Corp, yet there's so little for SK, so you're pretty much able to spot it exactly what SK are trying to do. And it looks like they're trying to get on towards Kana in this top side, but I don't know if you got the follow-up here. No one jumps forward. Shadowing Strike is going to connect. Isma dashing across the wall. Glacial Prism will get the slow. Kana still has Flash here. Isma stepping further forward. Flashes away. The TP behind now. There's the quickness in by Targos, but he's stunned before he can get to Niski, and the Magnus Storm comes down. Closer down to half HP. The one just surviving. Rahul trying to put the damage down from across the wall as well as Irrelevant will join the fray. Vladdy dashes in. Gets the Flash out as well, but immediately delivers the Slicing Mountain to his backline. Up a set and closer. The last two standing for Carmen Court. It's a close fight, a 2v3 affair. I Isma, felt like... So, as Targamus Targa tries to go forward into Niski, there's not really a play. Luan is barely escapes away, but now Targamus oh. might be caught. Targamus has no flash, immediately locked up, CC'd, permafrost. A little bit more as Targamus dashes, no warmogs yet for him, so won't be able to heal up too much. Has that gleaming quill for a little bit. Glacial Prison connects onto Upset, who has the cleanse back up. Closer goes in with the Twisted Advance, but he falls first. Irrelevant gets him. And the Hextech Rocket Belt. Another pick secured. Targamus was the target, but it ends up being Closer who drops. He doesn't have the flash. Set up though, because it gives multiple Whoa. angles of attack for Relevant. Who has flash to TP to if he wants to try and get in behind KC. Closer has a blast cone to get in here. This feels risky. Control ward in the pit. Carmine Core group up as five. Niski takes a chunk. Irrelevant still looking for that flank position, but Targum is marking him well. 
Closer sitting on that blast cone. The Baron sitting on 2000. It begins to reset as SK look for the engage with Targumus with a good knockup. The, the Baron's going to be taken by Carmine Core. Kana might fall for it alongside Targumus, but KC have pulled off the heist of the century. Take a Baron for the cost of your top and support. You take that any day. SK left the Baron way too low, and now SK will try and get something back, but that was a massive blunder. KC just go over the wall. Sure, they get mid tower, but if KC can try and use this Baron to get a bit back, could be great, but Dragon up and available, and you're still missing Kana. I mean, we'll see how much KC can really get off the back of this Baron, because they are they lost kills, they're losing objectives. Ultimately, SK still have control over the map. Uh, we turn our attention to Vladi, who turned his attention Even to... Even Vladi investing that TP was kind of KC, sending a bit of a Hail Mary play to see if they could get the Tier 2 Terror, but now has to reset and it's just down a TP, so will be the last out of turn. point two k Nothing too consequential as the game goes on. They are trying to control this top side of the map. Close of the one court. No flash on him, remember. Burnt it in that bot lane play. And the bullet time alongside Niski's rockets is enough to make him pay. Yeah, they spotted Kana pushing in on that bottom side. So SK felt comfortable. Test. They are overstacking mid, though. They need to want to go and catch that bot wave ID. The TP invested now from Niski to join the bot jungle. It's Had to burn the team. TP because uh, True Shop Rush caught him from upset in the top lane as he was basing. So. Has to burn that to get in. There is a ward behind Carmine Core, just above that rock face near where Upset stands. Can't quite. Oh, maybe we can see it on the mini map, but can't quite see it on the current view. Irrelevant, irrelevant looking for the flank. There's the Nature's Grass. Luan will tank. True Shot Barrage coming out. Luan on the front line. Magnet Storm locks up Targamus, and he can't get on the back line at all. The Drake secured by Closer, but how much might oh, Carmine Core oh. lose? The slice in Maelstrom, Vladdy slides him away, and Irrelevant slows so Luan and Isma. Rahel now has to play in a 1v3. Kana chasing forward, upset, doing the same. It's two more. Vladdy with a beautiful slide and glide in, allows Carmine Core away back in the fight, and upset's dashing forward. He cleanses away, the Krugs get in his way. It's not able to escape to fight another day. But he's just keeping him busy, allowing them to push in the mid lane. KC with a massive team fight win, completely swinging the momentum. Is that the game? A lot of the burst is gone. I mean, those death timers are relatively long with three of the carries still alive. KC gonna look to try. Isma needs to clear the wave, but it's so difficult with bodies in the way. Can he get onto it? He's trying desperately to get to them. Niski up in 13. Isma distracts for a moment, but it might not be enough time. Carmichael begin to rip through the Nexus Towers, and a flick of a switch for KC as they go 1-0 up in the series. Just like that, a game that... Engage. You don't need to all in on more engage. And Rakan is good because it's a mix of, you know... The champion is so versatile and flexible that they can keep... Shadowing to make sure this wave gets shoved out. Oh, Isma, the timing. Yeah, Isma might just wait for the back. Time was going in, immediately engaged onto upset. The cleanse away has used the flash as well, but the ignite is still ticking. Close that keeps Isma at bay, but there's the permafrost stun. Upset CC'd up with the slow as well, but they just can't get close enough to put the damage down. Rahel flashes for first blood. Time was almost Niski. following Rahel, tanks another tower shot. Niski. Sneaking behind the back here, Vladdy has TP, might have to invest it to save his bot lane, but Niski with the grasping more finds one. Targamus almost follows, but able to heal himself back up with a gleaming quill. TP invested by Vladdy. Can catch that wave. He's too late though. I mean, the play's already happened. Niski got the kill. Rahel no gets the kill. Kari, so support shouldn't it's be true. there. So I think it shouldn't happen anymore, but it does make sense, especially when you've already got closer in a decent position to try and set up for a nice little Push through onto this bottom They're side, contested top, red. Kana calls the Forge God. Flashes away because otherwise Irrelevant could have stunned him immediately. Still, they look for the dive. Permafrost down on him. Isma tanking the tower well, and SK get the kill and get out. Very clean setup, and there's not really. I think the fact that they're able to get some vision down as well, just to spot exactly where everyone is, is going to be very nice. And maybe even in a position, honestly, to contest Void Grubs after this as well, just but how quickly they've taken it. He yeah. even... Also, there's a lot of engage on the side of KC that could perhaps be used to mitigate the strength that SK has right now. It's a 2k gold overall with a lot of that sitting on top of Irrelevant, and he's going to be the scary target for upset that he has to deal with. 
I think it's also just a lot of long range damage from SK is really difficult for upset because oh, yeah. it's, you know, the severing bolt from Niski, the ult from Rahel over the top, and Kana. Oh, fear misses, but Kana, even trying to clear out the wave, doesn't get all of the minions. His tower falls, spiraling despair down on him, but he's still tanky enough to survive. Vladdy going in, Niski on the wrong side of the wall, but perhaps it's Vladdy who's being caught as the seismic shove doesn't hit. Niski flashes away from it. Irrelevant chasing Kana down. Is uh, Vladdy's already going to go down? Upset takes a kill, though. Irrelevant's able to get one in response as Kana falls. Upset flashing forward, misses the zap, but should still be able to kill off Isma. Can he get excited enough to dodge away from this? Luan goes in with a magnet storm, and Upset is left to the wolves. SK find three. An explosive fight that happens in the top side of the map that SK end up making work. Remember that it's SK that tried to force the dive. They wanted to secure a tower and convert that into a kill onto Kana. The TP start getting thrown out and it ends up in this yes. crate. That Targamus would be engaged on there. Rift Tower goes down in the mid lane. Won't kill the tower with a single charge, but SK can back it up. Irrelevant's going to be the one charging in. So it takes a chunk. Vladdy jumping away, Glacial Prison. Hits onto Upset who uses the cleanse. No summoners now on the Carmine Core AD carry. Mid lane tower falls. Severing Bolt from Niski is dodged, but it's a very powerful. They, they seem a lot more disciplined in allowing KC any opportunities to fight back. What do you do if you're KC in this sort of position? It's easy to say, they, you know. They have full vision, and they can just use their poke from Huey and Ezra. Of course, Ezra pushing out the mid wave. KC have found an avenue into the river, though, as they pass bot and they start off the Drake. And Closer looking for that flank. Rahel is still on the mid wave. True Shot Barrage comes out. Closer's going to be spotted. Jumps onto Niski. Call of the Fortress coming down as well as Kana looks for the CC. Niski flashes away, but Rahel joins the fray. Closer's already down, and although Carmine Core found a flank, they immediately lose their jungler. That was a nice attempt from Closer, but. Vladdy was just a little bit too far away. They couldn't get the combo off onto Niski, and it means that SK are able to route them where they stand. I mean, it's become a one-sided affair for SK as they dominate from the early game. And things are looking promising. They're looking to bring us to a game three. Casey are gonna have to find another miracle fight, but it's a great representation of how difficult these fights are gonna become for KC. Is the idea there is good, maybe find an initial pick. But it's very difficult for Upset to follow up. Uh, Kana on the front line is... In that previous fight, he didn't have Sun... Sure. We'll bring back a couple of the minions, but can't catch the cannon. So that will continue to rattle away on this tower. Rahel tanks a couple of shots. Irrelevant in the mid lane. Pushed out bot now mid. Gets the tier 2. Oh my course, start to react to it. And we'll forfeit a tier, a tier 2 in the top lane as well. As you would expect. KC kind of retreating back to their last line of defense. Irrelevant makes his way back towards bot. And they're just looking for a mistake from SK to come through. You know that SK, though, is so aware after what happened in game one. They don't want to make that. True. So a difficult road for you to go through if you are going to make it to be crowned the champion of the summer playoffs. Isma looking here, already used the Glacial Prison. Irrelevant going in with the Dominus as well, trying to see if he can get something out of Upset, but he's shepherded back by the rest of his team. And because Carmichael Core had to invest in that top side, they lose their mid lane in here. Targamus going in with the quickness, but a Magnet Storm Irrelevant flashes the wall, and it's all done. It's all over, but the Nexus falling. Upset tries to get away, but he can't escape for hell. SK wipe away a Carmine Core. The inhibitor in the mid lane will fall shortly after the fight. The Nexus will fall shortly after that. And we're going to game three. SK cleanly wipe off game one and say, no lads, we're not going over easy. Planer to yes, the encounter, because that was really strong. I do remember ago. that, because yeah. wasn't that... Um, that was the Xiaohu meta. The Xiaohu, that was yeah. exactly... We saw this in game two as well. Like the True. really early first Drake before the Void Grubs even spawn. Then you go up towards the Void Grubs and, and try and get the push up there. Obviously, Irrelevant not able to push out Kana early doors here, so it's going to be a little bit trickier for them to go for those Grubs. TP in by Niski towards the bot lane here, maybe forcing Targamus closer and upset a little bit further back. You can see Vladdy TP towards mid. The engage goes down. Targa with a double knocker, but he's the first to fall. Luan able to escape behind the back of Niski. The Dragon does reset. Can they aggro it again before it's full HP? They can't, so SK will just get a single kill out of me. Kana hit a few of the minions, which means that it's now going to slow push towards Relevant. He's got to be careful about a potential dive. You can see that CS discrepancy really starting to build in the top side of the map. 
ultimately irrelevant is going to be struggling in this matchup. Khan is doing you a good job. You just assumed that Closer would be able to take it well, before him smite. anyway because he had no smite. Yep, I was getting there, Betty. That, yeah. It was a roundabout way, but I got there in the end. No presence in mid lane either. Vladdy had already got that push, Khan in top, so it would have been a very difficult take. Yeah, is -flash. he? Might is that closer. Closer still has the flash here. It hits level six. Glacial Prison leveled up, but not enough to buy him some time to get away from Luan. Isma takes the kill with an Nature's Grasp. We've got a knock back here as he sliced and dies forward. Ruthless Predator for the stun. Kana low on mana. Does still have a flash of his own if he needs to escape this situation. And I think he does. Flashes under the safety of the tower. Kana's knock back end up putting a good play from Targamas to find that flank position. On the upside, though, Luan is opened up to go for Kana, and Isma's here closer to cover. I think Eleven just wants to back away from this one. Pops the Domina, still tanking the tower, even with the true shot barrage. Kana falls irrelevant, able to slice his way out. It was a dicey situation for him, but SK get out scot-free. Buddy here as well, though, so SK going to just be happy to try and get some pressure back, but nicely done by Let's SK. Share XP. Both top laners do have TP. But it looks like, okay, smartly from KC, they, they choose to abandon it. It's fine. They instead focus their attention towards the top tower. Plates are still available. A minute left on those, and they're also top camps that they can take away. So I like the approach from KC. There's little that SK can do to punish. They'll send Vladdy down to go and catch the bot wave. And SK have to just focus on catching waves as KC turn their attention to top tower. Yeah, rather than going to burn everything, just try and Blue clear out the wave, way. but there's so many people here from KC. Tongmas goes in, has that unbreakable will. Irrelevant still has the Ruthless Predator stun, but he hasn't had a chance to use it. Carmine Core, execute the dive and execute the croc. Nice bit of revenge there for KC. After losing Kana in the top lane dive, they're able to take down Irrelevant. This tower is likely to fall as well. The, of course, trade for that will be Niski securing this bot tower, albeit slower than what we're seeing on the top side of the map. But TP, is this risky? Nature's Grasp. Isma looks for the dive immediately. Kana goes in. Twisted Advance going forward as well. Isma tanking for days, but not for long enough. One more shot would have killed him. Kana able to survive. Still has his flash as well. So I think the idea here was Kana can TP into bot. Then Lane quick. Both. AD carries, ironically, chunk each other down without actually hitting each other. The Herald gets secured by his friend. Hey, just the KC trading towers on the opposite side of the map, but with Rift Herald in tow, they of a win for SK. Would love to try and use that in mid lane, especially when the Dragon comes up in two and a half minute times, so just try and put some pressure onto KC on the map. Miski? I wasn't sure how aggressive he wanted to go onto Kana there, but yeah, I think from like the map, but in the mid lane, he's opted into the teleport, and if you get into close range against a lot of SK, you are in the danger zone and already feeling that hurt as he has to burn his flash. Mike, get caught again! Niski has to flash away. The solar flare going immediately onto Vladdy. Niski gets the kill. Luan not back though, and he's going to be sacrificed underneath this tower. Kana coming in from the side. Niski has no way out of this, nor does Isma. Two more kills over to Carmine Core. There's no way for Irrelevant to join the fight. It's a four. Upset though, and if he's left. In a team fight, unscathed, untouched, he will have an absolute field day. No war marks completed for anyone just yet, so Pope's gonna take the engage immediately. Isma falls low, able to survive with the twist advance forward, but there he's down. Closer goes down in response. Lou on the next to fall. It's a double so far for upset. The dive in though by Irrelevant is beautiful. Ruthless Predator with the stun. But now Vladdy, the second AD carry. Why not have two? And Vladdy gets two to boot. It's four for two in favor of Carmine Core. It's a double tap for a double kill from Vladdy. Absolutely settles the score for KC. Finishing off multiple low members of SK and now securing Dragon for them as well. It was such a close fight until it won. Things are back around, building that blue wall brick by brick. Of course, our walls can come tumbling down. Humpty Dumpty had a fall off one once, so we've never heard the end of it. As Kana trades with Irrelevant, Rahel jumps in and Kana's overextended. Rahel finds him. The power of the killer instinct from SK. Really nice punish from SK. These type of picks are really valuable for them, especially because they alleviate... Stronger than Luan, just hoping for a Zenith Blade. So still, you have to be careful here as SK continue to just look for the poke, and that's all they're doing, just keeping people interested on this top side as Rahel is able to solo extra team. Now he can start to drift across, but he does have to be a little careful with how aggressive he goes here. Niski going forward, Glacial Prison finds him in the column. Puts him in the dirt. Isma with the nature's grasp buys himself a second of relevant TP'd in here. Will be spotted. He's on a control ward. Huge ward. mistake. I can't believe he would ever consider face checking that. There's no need for him to go anywhere near that brush. KC now going to finally secure this tower. I wonder if they'll threaten the Baron. They got the TP out from Irrelevant as well. 
All things looking up for KC. They'll keep the pressure, but I think they're more looking to link up with Khan in this bottom side. You see he's already prepped the wave, but not entirely sure. It looks like they're, they're just going to take away as much of the jungle as possible. So I don't use it anymore. Beneficiary and benefactor. Yeah, well, please don't. <laughs> please don't get us on that one. Right, Again, on look at Closer. Goes in. Only hits Isma up and Isma bursts down. Even with the Twisted Advance, he's still already down. The Sun landing on Irrelevant as well as Rahul has to kill an instinct across the fight. Carmine Cole already found two, it's three. The AD carries remain standing, but what can they do without their front line? SK, can they fight back? That is a massive team fight win for KC. Their target is the front line, and they just melt Isma. Immediately, SK is forced to play defensively, and it costs them three. The Baron will be secured for KC, and they take firm control over game three. There's nothing that SK could do with this push onto the bottom side of the map. They could try and spread it out, but I mean, you've already seen at the moment, SK trying to deal with that mid wave. They're just going to completely barrel down through this bottom side. Open opportunities for Carmichael as possible to get towards the tier twos with this Baron buff. The Drake secured. It's the second of the game for KC. And a minute remains on the Baron. They've made. We need SK in a full on 5v5, so we're just never going to give you the opportunity to find a separated. Facial Prison going out, irrelevant, looking for that flank position. Kind of a long way back. Solar Flare. Moza caught up in the nature's grasp, but nothing really connecting from SK. I have to remember the changes Carmine called made coming into summer as well. Carter, Closer, Vladi all joining the team now. They're the ones helping carry them perhaps to top four. Targum is down to about a third HP. A shock blast hits four, and everyone falls down to half HP. The tower's gonna drop. SK don't have the resource. Would that be enough to turn the game potentially? But right now it's KC who are controlling the narrative of this game. Flash in. Poser looking for Niski, who flashes away himself. The culling's still there, and Targamus with a three-man knock-up. Niski low. Immediately, though, Carmine Corp being re-engaged on Targamus, falling lower and lower. I'm set on the back line. Rahel going for him. Rahel will fall. 4v3 now, as Niski has to be the one to do it all. Irrelevant man manages to find one. It's 3v2. Vladi dashing away from the Renekton. and closer there on the front line still. Niski trying to get in from the side, but Carmine Corp have found four. Niski jump forward, Niski jumps to his death! Carmine Core bury him with the rest of their team, and they can see the match next week against BDS in their sights. Rahel couldn't do it, Irrelevant couldn't do it, Niski could not do it, but now the question rises, can Carmine Core do it? How high can this team rise? Can Luan delay them long enough? Eight seconds on Isma, the first next his tower has fallen. The second will follow shortly after. And the blue wall is growing ever taller. Allez, le bleu, Carmine Core are going. These were some of the best highlights from today's 2024 LEC Summer Playoffs matchup. Which moment was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. This is OP, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.